Hi there and welcome to another scrapbooking process video. Today I'm bringing you one more page that I created using these giant chipboard words from Dear Lizzie. They came in the Hip Kit Club for the month of October. And we're just going to jump right into the process here. So I have the word memories, which is the last of these words that I had available in the package. And I'm just going to take some mist. This is mist that came in a previous hip kit and uh, it is called Ruby. And I just soaked the entire word with mist, as you saw there. I'm using my Tri Art uh, palette, which is um, a, a large white piece of plastic that uh, things don't stick to it so it's a really nice surface for doing mixed media on. Sometimes things will stick but it just kind of peels right off. So I'm going to put a couple of coats on this because it tends to soak into the chipboard. This is a, I, I'm gonna say unfinished, it's ready to paint so it's, it's, um, it, it has a really nice smooth white top surface to it but it does still absorb it's it's a paper surface so it does still absorb a, a lot of mist and so on it if you were using paint it would paint right over it uh, but for mist it does soak in and that's actually part of the look that I was looking for was to get a little bit of a see how it's kind of modeled there it's not just a solid red if I wanted it to look more solid what I would have done is uh, primed that word with some gesso first Either white gesso or clear gesso would have done the trick. And then that that red would have uh, kind of pooled up. It would have taken a, a lot longer to dry, but uh, it would have given you a nice solid. And, and I, really, if I was looking for a solid version of this word, I would have used paint instead of mist. But I really liked the mottled look that the mist was giving on other pages that I made with these words. So I wanted that as well. Now. As you see, I just used some temporary adhesive and put it, I'm just using the actual insert that came with the product as my background here so that I don't get my working mat all full of glossy accents. And the product I'm using here is glossy accents. And I am just slowly filling in the entire top surface of this misted chipboard with a thin but smooth and full coat of glossy accents and glossy accents is designed for exactly this kind of a of an application and so it does smooth out you want to make sure that if if there are any bubbles in it that you just take a little pin and prick them but uh, you're not supposed to shake glossy accents and I store mine upside down so that I don't get any bubbles in it and and that really helps the application. Now I actually left that for several days and uh, now I'm back. I have printed up a photo of all the kids on 90210 from way back in 1990 and uh, I basically decided to scrapbook the, the 90210 kids because uh, right now I'm actually doing a class over on my Patreon for the next 10 weeks or I guess the next nine weeks or no the next nine months actually uh, although maybe a little bit less time I, I have nine more lessons left is what I'm trying to say and those might come out at a rate of about one lesson a month or they might come out a little bit faster than that. And the class is all about scrapbooking your high school years or your college years or middle school years. It's basically a phase of life scrapbooking class. And I'm talking about how you can scrapbook even if you don't have many photos, even if you don't have great memories or um, all of those sorts of challenges that sometimes come up with scrapbooking that fa a, a phase of life that was a while ago. So I'm just using these pink fresh letters for my title here and I... I, as I mentioned, I have 10 lessons planned and six lessons completed and filmed and ready to post, um, but I kind of didn't get a chance to scrapbook a page about the fashion that was popular when I was in high school. And that was one of my alternative lessons, but I didn't actually scrapbook it. So I wanted to take advantage of this large memories word to be an embellishment for my page about 1990s fashion. And I thought I would make this video not part of the class, but kind of like a bonus video for anybody to watch because 
because I wanted to, you know, share as much of my process. So my cat here is a little bit interested in what I'm doing. Uh, but I wanted to share some of this class with you guys, although most of it is going to be shared with my Patreons. So I have the Freckled Fawn kit here from the month of November, and it is full of lots of really fun goodies. And I love the 12 by 12 paper that Freckled Fawn is making. And so um, I'm a little bit worried that my cat is going to step all over my photo and leave kitty prints on it. So that's why I keep kind of encouraging her to lay off to the side. So look at how bright and colorful this paper is. And I really wanted to have this page be kind of like a, have lots of pops of color on it. So this paper is a little bit overwhelming if you look at it in a giant 12 by 12 uh, piece, but once I use it as a mat for my photo, and you'll notice I already attached the photo to the piece, like to the word, and I just added some glue and with my with my tape runner and just tapped it down onto the photo in the place that I wanted it to be so that I can design with that those two elements together the whole time and now I've just added a mat and that just brings some of that bright color of the there's like a similar color of red in the pattern paper that I used as the mat and it just brings some of that color up above the photo as well like well basically all around the photo and it brings in the title like the color of the title it makes it it pulls it together a little bit so now i would like to put a large yellow rectangle as one of my layers here and this pattern paper all of the paper that i'm using today is from freckled fawn from november and so i just kind of used my pencil to figure out how wide it needed to be i didn't i wanted it to fit inside of the scallops of my background paper which is also a, a really cool freckled fawn paper i haven't used one of those bubbly background papers in a really long time but it really felt very 90s to me so so i wanted to to use it now this paper is gorgeous this is one of my old school techniques for layering papers is to come up with to have two two pattern papers that are basically rectangles that are almost the same size and then layer them with an almost square that's going to go in between those two layers so the recipe is rectangle square rectangle and i put the two rectangles in opposite directions so you've got a horizontal rectangle right under the page then you've got a square then you've got a vertical rectangle on the very back layer on the background and as much as i love this bubbly paper i felt like it needed something matting it it was so i'm going to actually use that dark blue solid pattern it's not pattern but the solid paper that came in the kit of square of 12 by 12 papers from freckled fawn i'm going to use that as a mat as well but first i'm going to take some time to outline multiple outline i'm, I'm outlining each paper three times which gives me a nice dark line and it also because those lines overlap and wobble around a little bit it gives it a nice casual look and it pulls together these three papers because they're all basically reading as solid so the putting a line all the way around it makes them look like they belong together even though there's no overlap of color between like I don't have the same color showing up in in each of the papers to bring them together so here is my way of and basically you can layer these papers any way you want but this is just kind of like a, an easy rule of thumb way to come up with layers that look really good is my rectangle square rectangle formula <laughs> and i like how it looks it looks very much the way like an older page that i would have done a while ago but i really like it it's 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 really kind of giving me the feels right now <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to layer them together. I'm just using my Stampin' Up! tape runner. I think they call it snail adhesive. And just taping those on and gluing them on in the order in which I had placed them. And basically, I'm, I am I want kind of like an L on that turquoise paper. See how the overall shape of it looks like two L's? One is backwards, but an L on the top and an L on the bottom. They're both sideways as well, but so it's not just a whole bunch of rectangles that just adds a little bit of interest. 
And now I'm taking off a quarter of an inch on each of these sides so that I can mat this bubbly paper on the solid blue that's also from Freckled Fawn. Oh, I really love how that looks. And it picks up on some of the colors that are in that really colorful paper that I used for the mat as well. As I mentioned, I'm using Pink Fresh Studio chipboard, not chipboard, they're wood veneer letter stickers that look like they've been dipped in gold. And now I'm kind of stuck because I actually really love this page just the way it is. And I kind of don't want to embellish it. <laughs> Uh, but there are these really great embellishments that come in the Freckled Fawn November embellishment kit. So I'm going to have a look at those and think about how I might want to add some embellishments. Now, as far as scrapbooking the 90s go, um, what I really wanted to capture here was some of the fashion that I used to dress like in, late high, in my late high school year. So I graduated in 91, so this would have been grade 11 for me. And... Um, I, I I don't have any photos of myself in high school, or not many of them anyways, none that I could find. And so I kind of thought about what what is a way that I could capture some of the different looks. Like I wanted to capture like how I would dress if I was dressing up as well as if I was looking casual. And so I thought what, what was on TV then that was people who were supposed to be around our age. And so I remembered that Beverly Hills, Hills 90210 was really, really popular at the time. So I just Google searched Beverly Hills 90210. And I, I think I also Googled like 1990s fashion and um, just to kind of get get some ideas of what people were wearing so that I could remember. And then this picture came up and it kind of shows, it's nice because some of the girls are really dressed up and some of them are more casual and there are like lopy sweaters with drop shoulders and those jeans that are really loose and the and the um, pleated fronts of the pants on the boys pants and I just thought that this picture really captured how we were dressing in the early 90s and late 80s and <laughs> I kind of can't stop laughing as I look at it because it's so awesome <laughs> and so not the way we dress today and it's actually kind of funny because I remember in the 90s thinking that the 80s was the worst time of fashion and how how much better and, and normal looking fashion was in the 90s. And I remember actually saying to my friend in, in early university, you know, like, I think the 90s are going to be known as being non trendy, kind of, you know, just good, solid, logical kinds of clothes, you know, that just make good sense. <laughs> And now I'm looking at it and thinking, oh, what were we thinking? So some of these let some of these letter stickers have adhesive that are is a little bit off. Like they have adhesive that's exactly cut the same shape as the as the words, as the letters and numbers. And so I'm just taking taking them off and putting them back on when needed. And you'll notice that, of course, there's only one of each number and I needed two nines. So I just made these six upside down, even though that makes it, you know, like it's dipped on the top instead of on the bottom. I think that that's just kind of like, I actually think that that's kind of cool. So I'm just going to leave it. I like it like that. Now I was thinking maybe what I'll do since I'm hesitant to embellish this and this is what I've been doing with these big word layouts is not doing very much embellishing at all but I thought maybe I'll just like put a whole bunch of these words all over it and that'll be my embellishment. They're not words, but they're phrases. So I'm picking out a good combination and I'm trying to include some negative as well as some positive. Like some of them say things like great big mess. And um, I've, I think one of them says crazy, but the crazy, the so crazy isn't actually going to make it to the page in the end. But I'm trying to kind of like make it clear that I'm not being too negative. Like I think it's kind of cool that we used to dress this way, but I just wouldn't want to dress this way anymore. So I kind of want to say both positive and negative things about this style of dressing. And so as I am figuring out, I thought about using this 
little charm and I'm thinking maybe I'll tie it on the bottom of the S there. I think that that might look nice with some twine. So I'm just going to leave it there so I don't forget about that idea because sometimes I forget my own ideas while I'm scrapbooking. I don't know if that ever happens to you guys, but I have uh, one thing that I meant to mention is that I have actually removed the stickiness. These labels, the one that I'm writing on right now is from the Freckled Fawn kit. It has a, a whole sheet of labels. My journaling says Beverly Hills 90210 was the teen soap everyone watched in 1990. These, uh, these nine were very trendy at the time. And so I have taken the sticky off of the back of my stickers by using a little powder tool that I use for, sometimes I use it for embellishing. It's an EK Success powder tool and you can use it to take the sticky. Now these chipboard stickers don't aren't sticky because they have the backing still on them. So that's not, so I just used it for the purse, the chipboard purse that I was thinking about using and also for the uh, fray, like the little label. But these chipboard ones aren't sticky. So I've changed my mind. Instead of making those words go all over the place, I thought I'd make two vertical arrangements of the words. And so that's what I'm doing. And then that leaves me with this gap above the word 1990 that I thought I'd put a piece of washi tape. And then that watch is kind of relevant because you know we actually wore, wore watches then. A couple of the cast members have watches on. And uh, you know, like we don't really a lot of people don't really wear analog watches anymore. So I thought that that would be kind of indicative of the time. So I'm thinking about using that there, but it's bugging me the whole time. I Sometimes I'll leave something there and just see if it grows on me with time. And as the page comes together, something sometimes something that at first looked a little strange ends up looking okay. So I'm just giving it a chance to do its thing and maybe look okay. And meanwhile, I'll put all these down. And then I did put some foam adhesive on the back of this label. So I just pour, peeled off the little, the little backings and put that down. And so now I'm thinking about it. And what am I going to do? First, I'm going to, I'm still thinking about it. So I can't decide about the watch. So I will go ahead and put some twine on the S and try to tie this little charm that came in the freckled fawn kit and put it right here on the little S. What I'm doing here, the reason I'm fiddling so much with the twine, this is Baker's twine from Stampin' Up, and it comes on a white card, which, like a, a piece of cardstock, which I really don't like it when they put twine on a card like that because it ends up having these crinkles in it, you know, like little bends, instead of being smooth. If it was on a spool, it would just be smooth. So what I do is I take my fingernails and I just pull on it and work it through my hand and just work it and work it and work it until it is no longer kinky. And uh, so I did that and then you saw me just twist it around that little st that little tail of the S and tie it into a tiny little bow. And now there's one little kink that's left in the edge of that like the little dangling part of the bow and I can't for the life of me get it out. So I'm going to use a little tiny glue dot to hold that that charm in place. I just won't, don't want it to flop around too much. And then I'm just going to take my fingernails and pull pull them through like basically I'm pulling the the string through my fingernail and my and my index finger, the fingernail of my thumb and my index finger over and over and over again until that um, until that string loses its kink. So I got rid of the watch because ugh, I just didn't like it. And so now I thought maybe I could put a little row of these houses. The houses aren't really relevant to the story at all. But yeah, I don't know. I thought that they might look nice. I like them, so I wanted to use them. Uh, I don't like it either, so I'll put some enamel dots down while I think about what I might want to do. Um, and I j basically just want to put enamel dots every here and there and not have too many of them. I don't like the pink right next to the red. There is both pink and red on this page, so that's okay, but I just didn't like them side by side like that. So I switched the dots from the pink to the greeny color and I'll also put some green up here and then I'll put some white right here beside the charm. I think that looks really cute. I'm just putting sets of two in three different places here and I'm thinking 
I want to add a doily to this. So I pulled out my doily drawer and I have to put away my chipboard first so I don't get too big of a mess happening here. This is a cute doily. These are from Studio Calico and they're doilies, but they have polka dots on them. But it's a little bit too busy. I already have a number of different patterns happening here. So, ooh, that doily is way too bright yellow. It's way too of a yellow yellow. This one is a little bit more calm. It's more of a neutral yellow, neutral gold. And so I'm going to put that up there. Even though I'm not like really loving it, it's okay. It does soften it. Basically, the reason I chose a doily is there's so many angles and rectangles up there. I just wanted something a little bit softer. And I'm thinking I'll add a tag as well, or maybe a pair of tags. Now those obviously are sticking out too much. If I use them, I'll trim them down. And so let's trim them down and see how they look. I like them like that. Yeah, that looks okay. I'm thinking that the text, the black and white text is a little bit too busy. And then I have one single black reinforcer on like one of the, the tag with the text has a black reinforcer on it. And it's like the only black thing on the page. So I'm thinking, ah, oh, maybe I don't want that. Maybe I'll layer these two together. Now this is Chloe. And I'm not going to kick her off my desk as much as I did Lila because she's sick and so I feel bad for her. So I just let her, I let her do whatever she wants. <laughs> See, she just, you know, I'm, I'm just going to leave her. She can stay. <laughs> Uh, and now this is really old. I pulled out my drawer of borders, which I rarely use anymore, but I knew I had, I wanted something to take the place again, that 1990s, the gap above the date, the 1990, and also above the photo, it needs to be filled in with something. And the washi tape in the houses just aren't going to do it for me today. So I pulled out this banner. It's made by crate paper and it's basically different patterned vellum half circles that are sewed together and I adore this. I remember loving this embellishment when it came out several years ago and this is actually my second package. I used a whole package of this already uh, and this is my second package that I have in my stash from a long time ago. And now let's just play with Chloe for a little while because she's just too freaking adorable. Look at her little messy face. She's so sweet. She's been on medicine for a week at this point and she is feeling a little bit better. Her paws are just slightly better. If you follow me on social media, you might have seen my photo that I posted of her, of her cute little sore paws. Uh, they're healing, but they're going to heal very, very, very slowly. It's going to be weeks and months before we see a big difference. But he said to track the difference every week because you might, like, we'll be able to know if the meds are working by looking at it week by week, not day by day. So I did take pictures of her when she started it and I took pictures of her again and they do look a little bit better one week into treatment. So, but not much, but still a little bit better. So I had to play with her. I can't not indulge in her. <laughs> so I just used my tiny attacher to staple the banner and I'm actually going to tuck the banner under the the sticker that instead of having it go over that little blue phrase I'm going to I'm going to tuck it under and here she's back for more and she's so much more social now that she's on medicine too she used to always kind of like hide off on her own and not really interact very much so it's really nice to see her both energetic and also social is really nice <laughs> look at her <laughs> all right so again, I'm just rub rubbing my hands over the the string to try to, the baker's twine, to try to make it more smooth and not have those bends in it. And I'm going to put some string in my tag because I like to do that. And at some point I decided to just go with the gray tag because it's more plain and it's not quite so distracting. So I thought I was done, so I was showing it to you, but then I decided that I wanted to outline around the edges of the green um, scalloped paper. I mean, it's white scalloped paper with green around the edges of it. And so I'm just taking my, I'm actually using my Stetler Lumo Color pen because it's a slick surface pen and this pattern paper has a bit of a slick surface to it and I just wanted to not have to worry about smudging and letting something dry so I'm just using a slick surface pen and I outlined and I got a little bit of powder in some of the grooves of the layers so I just had to uh, take that 
off with my hand. And here, here we go with the close up video. There will be some photos as well at the end. And so I think that this is, although there's no lesson to go along with this one, usually um, my classes have not only a process video, but also a little lesson on something like how to um, kind of solve a problem in phase of life scrapbooking or some ideas like brainstorming different ideas of categories to scrapbook when you're putting together an album of your high school years but this one doesn't really have a lesson so that's why I decided to just make this a public scrapbooking process video that everybody can enjoy I hope that you guys enjoyed the process if you're interested in getting some ideas about how to scrapbook your high school years even if you don't have much photos or many photos or much memorabilia and even if your high school memories are not all that great I have parts of high school that I would rather forget. So I talk about about that as well in terms of, you know, how to how to um, come up with an album that you can feel good about and that captures some of those high school moments for your own memories and also that you can share with your family and loved ones as well. So here are those photos. I hope that you guys enjoyed this process. I adored working with those giant chipboard words and I think I will be buying more of them if they ever make more. I don't think I'll buy another set of those because I already have six pages <laughs> that have those six words on them. But uh, if they ever make another set of those, I will definitely be picking them up. And I think that the freckled fawn paper, just like the color scheme that that paper was in, just works perfectly as a beautiful background upon which I could put that photo with much more vivid colors in the photo and then have those pops of color in the both the word memories and also in some of those chipboard words around the page. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and check out these other videos if you're interested in watching more. Take care and have a really great scrappy week.